Hello. Hello. How's it going? Going good. How about you? I'm all right. Your sound is kind of how, like it's it's, I don't know the word, but it's it's kind of I can hear you twice, but like within a millisecond later, so it's like and elongated or something like that. Weird. Uh, hold on. Um, is, and it's it's still happening, right? Yeah, it's it, uh, it like your echo is coming a millisecond later or something like that. Some something like that that's happening. Yeah, but I I can hear you just fine. Uh, so I rejoined with audio. Did that help at all? A little bit. Right, let me let me just re-log in one second. All right, am I still echoing? Oh, sorry. I think you're good now. I'm good? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, how are you? Sorry? I think I already asked, but how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, yeah. It's finally summer in Seattle, so... It's Hello. a little bit better. Hello. How's it going? Good. I like I turn on my camera. You guys all turn on. <laughs> yeah. oh, I think that, what's that again? <laughs> I think that's what has uh, has been happening for a few meetings now. Me and Max are one of the starting ones joining in with off camera and then somebody else turns on the camera and I also turn on the camera. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm not gonna like sign into a meeting with my camera on, you know, <laughs> have, a, have a little like monologue moment where the camera's just like staring at me doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm. I see we don't have any agenda today, um, but can we maybe talk about 427 just to, it's been sitting there for a while. I, I, I know Jay's yeah. probably waiting on it to be done. So I yeah. Have, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to add as well. Okay, great. And also once you're done with this, you got to update Gatekeeper and then all the docs, right? So I, I definitely want to unblock you. Yeah. And then I have scoped enforcement action lined up after this one. So. Perfect. Yeah. And what were we waiting on in terms of moving the driver into Gatekeeper proper to remove that? Okay, the code is committed. Now we're updating Gatekeeper step. Were we were we just wanted to get this in, or were we going to do something else first? Uh, when you say move the drivers, you mean both? Opa and so. Oh, sorry. I thought I said singular. No, just the Kate's native validation driver. Oh, you just want that guy to be moved to gatekeeper? Yeah. Oh, why not? That's, that's why not what Opa? we were talking about uh, for like the past couple months. Sorry, go ahead. Why not Opa? If you're going to move, you move all of them, right? Uh, so the reasoning was that the Kate's native driver is like, highly coupled with Kate's, highly coupled with Gatekeeper, right? Like it's, uh, our, our, the, the way the driver works is what enables the resource generation. Um, I think we're a little less dependent on driver contents now, but we're still using like the expansion code mm -hmm. um, for 
get what the other things were. But yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Whereas Opa is more generic, right? You can Actually, throw anything at Opa. Okay, I added to the agenda. Um, do we, any other agenda? Uh, I guess um, templates. I should probably merge those templates that I have approved, uh, the VAP cell templates. You mean a uh, library? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It's also on my to-do list. I need to... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can, I can take uh, the rest of the two from your hand, Rita, if you want. Like, I see... No, I, I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. Yeah. Just let, let me... There's something about, like, I, I would like to finish what I started, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's pretty cool. I just need to rebase and, and then copy pasta, like all the goodness. You, you said rebase, right? Not not freebase? Rebase, yes. So and I could also use some reviews on... Um... No, I, I meant the reviews. I, I, I want to make sure we review your stuff before it... Like, uh, my number one thing for, the, for this week is to unblock you. Like, however we can, right? <laughs> and... And if you are still blocked, can you just bump yeah. in the chat in, in on Slack? Just, you know, uh, I'm sure everybody's really busy, but. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if you saw J.I. added you at a comment like two days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, about that uh, host network policy, right? I, I raised a PR for that one as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. And I you looked at Rita's me. feedback as well, and I I changed uh, like I followed up on that as well. So it should be good now. Okay, cool. I was a little surprised that the false one it doesn't look at uh, exam image at all. I was actually surprised, but I think it makes sense because basically it's saying if host network is false, we don't care. Like we don't even care if it's exempted or not, because the exam image stuff is more for the ports, right? The, the range. But it's not, again, it's, and you know, unless you look into it, it's like, it, you know, how would you know that? Well, it kind of, be, I think it makes sense because um, it's, it's not a container level configuration, right? Like it's a global configuration. Like you could argue, well, if a pod is running only exempt images, should it matter anyway, right? And that's that's certainly something to consider. Though then you'll get like weird things, like if you ever inject a sidecar, right? You might suddenly start to get uh, <laughs> violations that you never saw, uh, and you know, uh, so. I, I guess the you main can thing example, all, right? What's up? I guess you can example all wildcard. Right. I think for me, the most important thing is the Rego didn't work that way, right? Yes, yes. I, that was me too. I'm like, we can't break existing things unless, yeah. unless somehow we want to change the behavior for like a, a major bump. Uh, but that's a bigger change. Right, and you could not probably have convinced me either of these approaches were right. Um, so I wouldn't change the final behavior, though the the behavior we have just just because there's other ways. Like you can just exempt the pod at that point if you know a pod is only going to be running exempt stuff. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, you learn. You learn from your users, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Huh. But yeah, he, he the um the user made a good point that we should update the uh, description to make sure that's clear. Um yeah. okay, so we talked about this. Um who who brought up this thing? Jay, you brought up this thing. Okay. So Anyway, I was just asking for agenda, and then we kind of skipped number the first thing. So should we talk about four twenty uh, framework for PR four twenty seven? I I see both of you gave a thumbs up for the behavior in terms of we're not gonna 
to just to recap, re recap, uh, Suratash, right, is um, sounds like we don't want to implicitly decide for the user whether or not we're going to generate the, the binding for that, that binding. Instead, we're always going to rely on enforcement action in the constraint to determine if we're going to create the binding or not. Yeah, I yeah. do have like one usability question uh, mm -hmm. around the multi enforcement point stuff. We're allowing glob. Are we also allowing an exclude enforcement point parameter for the matching currently, or no? Okay, it's just inclusive. Okay, because this is this is a good example of where that might be useful. Like, let's pretend VAP is poorly behaved for a specific constraint. Having glob, but having glob otherwise makes sense, right? You want to audit it. You want to use Gator. Blah 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 blah. Um, you probably want to keep using glob, but just exclude VAP. So the neg negation, uh, but we don't have that. We don't support well, That's my question. I, I think we could go ahead without it, right? Like it's not a blocking concern because you could like turn VAP off entirely anyway, mm -hmm. right? So, and it's it's not enabled by default right now. But I, just to highlight, I think that feature does become a bit more salient if if we wanted to add it. Uh, I, oh, sorry, I have a follow up to this one. So, uh, the oral behavior is that by default, if VAP enforcement flag, the global flag is uh, saying that yes, uh, generate VAP or VAPB. For constraint, we generate VAP VA, uh, binding unless it's excluded from scoped enforcement action. Yeah. Ooh. So by default, that means we are generating binding, right? And for for constraints that have dry run actions, uh, there is no uh, uh, response, uh, respective dry run action for binding. It's just have warn and deny. Well, then I would uh, either consider warn to be equivalent or that dry run means don't generate a binding. Um, yeah, and I, I would also point out that we don't necessarily always generate the VAP binding object. Uh, that would be dependent on whether VAP is enabled at the global level. Right? Yeah, but VAP when VAP is enabled at global level, right? Like, and 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 for, like a constraint has dry run enforcement action, then we don't generate binding. That's a desired desired state of system, right? I would think so, right? Like there's a, um, we could we could take a fundamental design principle discussion here, right? Around what does it mean if I'm an enforcement point and I see an enforcement action that I don't recognize? Um, and if we wanted to have uniform like behavior for this situation, it might be worth thinking through what the right thing to do is, right? And providing an example. Um, we could, you know, uh, not generate the binding and uh, put some sort of like status message in the, the status field. Uh, I don't think we necessarily want to, nor is there a great way of doing this, uh, to basically like force the constraint to be in some kind of like error state such that it always rejects, like failing closed would. Um, like basically the failure policy fail uh, for VAP binding. Uh, so I think ignore with, you know, some kind of reporting is 
probably the right thing. So message on status saying that we respective binding is not generated because then I can't hear you. Okay. I, yeah, I, you, you so, were so I need to turn my video off. I just put on. Uh, yeah, so I was saying uh, the approach is basically update the constraint state, uh, constraint status saying uh, we uh, binding is not generated because the enforcement action in the constraint is defined as dry run. Well, we would say something like validating admission policy enforcement point does not recognize dry run, the dry run enforcement action. The thing about dry run is for Rego, right? For today, for Rego, when you have a dry run uh, constraint, it's basically audit. Yeah. Kind of. So could we, so could we, should we map it to audit in binding? Uh, but then in, audit in binding is different, right? Because uh, that that is included in the events in cube system, from what I. Yeah, remember. we shouldn't conflate enforcement action with enforcement point, right? Like that's just carrying over a mistake we made in the past into the future. Okay. Uh, also, dry run is still interesting for webhooks. Like, I'm kind of surprised VAP didn't go with it. Because what it is, it's almost a step before warning, right? Where you get Prometheus metrics around the rejection, but there's nothing exposed to users. So if you wanted to silently roll out a policy and just get a sense of, do I have pre-existing violations with audit? Am I seeing any kind of, like change in my enforcement metrics on the webhook such that I would maybe get some complaints if I were to escalate to warn or, or deny. Like, there, there are use cases for, for dry run uh, at, at the admission time. OK, so what do we want to do? Sounds like you're. You're saying that you're leaning towards don't create the binding? Yeah, so I I would say don't create the binding, maybe put a, a warning in the status of this constraint just so that people are aware. Um, I think there's a slight risk that people may overinterpret that warning to say that it's not taking effect at all, yeah. right? Um, However, I also think we probably want to move away from having the enforcement action. And this is that design doc I pushed a, a while back, uh, having the singular enforcement action field anyway. So, and we could like do that as part of moving to constraints V1 at some point, because there's still beta. <laughs> um, yeah, and as I said, I have a plan for that, but that's that's looking into the future, right? That's that's not something that needs to or should happen now. Mm. Uh, okay. I guess let's try it and see how it goes. Yeah, I, th I, I think what I was trying to get at with the wording is to make it like hyper specific to maybe get in front of some of that misinterpretation. Sorry, the wording of the error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think something along the line like, you know, dry run is not a recognized thing in binding. It, I think it like that, that binding is probably a good idea because that's what it is, right? It's it's about the VAP binding creation. It's not about whether or not the policy is enforced on the cluster. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's just, it'll look a little weird for people who only specify enforcement action and they're not using the multi-enforcement point stuff, right? Like they won't have 
the context to know that, oh, actually, this is representing just one enforcement point being unhappy out of three. Okay. Um, Do so we they, want... Was oh, it? Sorry. Oh, I thought you you finished with your thought. Go on. Like, you could put into the error something like, if Webhook and Audit are also configured to enforce this, it should still be enforced or something like that, or this will, will not affect enforcement by those points. Uh, that looks a little weird for people who are using multi-enforcement point enforcement action, right? Like, why are mm -hmm. you... Also, because you don't know. You don't know what they're using. So anything you say could be confusing. Right. Yeah. I, I would tend to... I think the if you are blah, blah, blah thing is oh. probably the best bet, because that at least gives them guidance that there's more to the story. Anyway, we can work Smith it in the PR. Yeah. Okay, I, so I, I'm just putting some stuff in the notes so we, we don't forget, right? So something like if you are using a VAP for enforcement, something like that, dry run is not an accepted action for VAP finding or something like that. Something like that. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, because, uh, just sorry, just, just, just to yeah, yeah. On that. yeah. Be, because this is important to highlight because just because it doesn't, it's there's no that binding doesn't mean it, like, for example, it doesn't mean it's not being audited, right? Yep. By, by gatekeeper, so yeah, uh, so we're gonna, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to like work Smith this a bit, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We could maybe put some affirmative seems good status fields on there, like audit happy, webhook happy. Um, I do, yeah, I, I, that that's also a little problematic because, like, you don't know. You don't want to overpromise happy. Well, no, I mean, uh, audit and webhook would report those statuses themselves. Um, but. Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I wouldn't want to necessarily oversell that. Like, happy implies that everything's good, whereas probably the thing we're actually meaning is it was successfully ingested, right? Like, it could very well still have runtime errors. We, we don't get feedback from cell if there's a compilation error. For instance. Mm hmm Jay, you were saying something? Yeah, so I was uh saying sounds like we are creating the constraint uh for if if dry run action is not recognized, right? Well no, I mean we're just we're doing all of the same behaviors. Like there's nothing we've said here that alters what Rita was saying. We're just also talking about, should we also report some status? Uh, so uh, reporting on constraint status, right? The, mm -hmm. the message. Yeah. Okay. So, so if, if uh, we are, uh, if, constraint has enforcement action dry run and uh, the configuration are such that we are supposed to create binding. Uh, we would create the constraint, but report the message on constraint status saying binding is what not do you mean by, Sorry, what do you mean by create the constraint? So cre by creating constraint, we also run audit, right? Like constraint, oh, I, oh okay. So yeah, yeah, the user creates the constraint, yeah, right? Yeah, by yeah, the time yeah. gatekeeper sees it, the constraint already exists. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I just got that part. I think that you're would... mixing it, yes. Yeah, because yeah. I thought that oh, sorry, the current ahead. behavior was uh, that if uh, if there is something some error in creating we uh, binding, we would not create the constraint itself. But that's not the behavior. Uh, yeah, I just got it. Sorry. Yeah, like these these should all act as completely separate systems. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. How about we have we add a VAP binding status? 
specifically in constraint status. That way we can say, was this created successfully? Did it fail? You know, in this case, it failed because, I mean, not, in this case, we didn't create it because the, 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 the action is not applicable, you know. That way it's just for that binding. That makes sense. Okay. I agree. Um, Okay, let me add this um, and add a, what do we call that though? Is it a new field, I guess? Yeah, I mean, status is a little weird anyway. Like we, uh, I don't think we generate a status schema for constraints, which is why, like we, we have some struct somewhere in Gatekeeper. So that's actually perfect. Uh, yeah, it would be under bipod, right? Because well, no. Okay, so what's doing the generation of the binding? Are we doing it in a singleton pod, or are we doing it like like within the audit pod, or are we doing it like in every gatekeeper pod? Uh, you mean the generation thing? Mm-hmm. Uh... I would tend to say, and this is a change from how Gatekeeper currently works, but we probably want to do downstream object generation in the singleton pod, right? And maybe at some point change how we handle constraint templates too, uh, just to avoid controller fights during rollouts. Like it's never been an issue, but in theory, like if we have like 10 gatekeeper pods, right? And they're all like on different versions, right? Or half are on one version, half is on another, right? And they see, let, let's say we're adding the ability to create failure policy, right? In, in the bindings, uh, the older pods don't recognize it. So if you have a constraint that's trying to create failure policy, the newer pods will propagate it. The older ones will go, that looks wrong. Let me remove that. The newer ones will recreate it, right? And so Gatekeeper will fight with itself until the rollout is complete. Hmm. So the reason why I I'm trying to figure that out is whether it should live under bipod or not. Uh, I mean, it could still live under bipod either way. Yeah, I would, I would put it under bipod, just uh, status dot bipod, just to add your bet. But... I, I was thinking under like enforced, oh, sorry, under status, but like it's the same as like audit timestamp and enforced. Enforced is a bad idea. Uh, like enforced means nothing. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying uh, not part of enforced. I'm saying under status. It's just another field under status. Right. Well, and and why I'm why I. It was saying enforced was a bad idea was because enforced is some a contact a, a concept that actually requires knowledge across all the pods. Mm. Um, and so if we put it at the status level, like that can work, but then we are definitely operating as uh, a single on, uh, at a, on a single pod level, right? Like, because otherwise, the uh, we don't have the semantic capability to properly report status. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which I'm fine with if we're fine with the running it as a singleton pod, but just know that's a one way door.
I mean, Audit is a singleton pod. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, is it if, uh, and, and I think it probably singleton pod is the right thing. But just know that choosing the schema is the equivalent of making that other choice as well. So if we're fine with it, cool. But then we're going to need to be, you know, cognizant of that as we're probably recoding the generation stuff, because I have a feeling the generation stuff as it stands is uh, multipod. Yeah. So we'll, we'll need to fix that up. Um, hmm. This should be easier, I feel. We're not talking about that much code. Like, this can all be fixed. These are just interrelated concepts, yeah. right? Uh, so I'm, I, I'm not trying to, like, make things difficult, just highlighting if this, then we're also deciding that. If we're OK with both of those decisions, cool. That changes. That, that like, limits our options for how we do the work. Not in any kind of hard way, but these are all impacts that are yeah. commingled. I get it. Yeah. What's the issue with under bipod again? Sorry. Uh, there's no issue with using bipod. Mm -hmm. uh, bipod just gives us headroom to change our minds in the future, right? Or or um, keep with our present behavior until we decide to change it. Uh, it you'll you'll wind up with one pod having the B VAP generation. I forget what we called it, process or whatever, uh, in, enabled on it. And so you would expect to see errors just reported in that status.bipod entry. So that's the UX impact. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Anyone else has an opinion? Are we good with doing the work to make it a singleton and not using status bipod? Or do we want to? Uh, leave our options open. I, I'm leaning toward the singleton, personally, but. So if it's a singleton, is it just, I'm trying to, and I apologize, I, for, I forgot this, but is it just like, who's going to be updating that guy? Audit. Is it just audit? Yeah, it's like the status reporting, right? Where we we have the operations. So another thing to think about okay. is like, you know, we have that operations flag and that's how we're, we divvy up like, oh, this is a mutation thing. This is a violation, like a, a validation webhook thing. These are all audit or status aggregation. Um, one thing that Bipod may be helpful with is if a user is futzing around, like they're not using the Helm chart or the, the default uh, template and they're, they're doing things on their own. There's, there's nothing keeping them from having two VAP generation operations, right? The singleton is just a convention in how we write our manifest. Okay. 
Um, so it might be useful for surfacing if someone has done that. If they they come in with like a support question. Mm. Okay. Um, well, let's try it. Let's try it. And this this is all net new, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. So you're, what you're you're saying? Try reporting it under just straight status, or yeah, the single. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess even if they don't have audit action, if this should still be reported. Then we would move need to move the generation code under audit dependency as well, right? No, 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 no. This should be a completely new operation. This this should not be audit. This should not be status yeah. aggregation. Okay. Which parts are going to have it then? The audit part? The audit, I mean, the audit pods will be the one doing it, but mm -hmm. in terms of like the operations flag, it would be a separate flag, right? Okay. So pe people can change it if they want. They, if they're not running audit, then they can add it to this to the controller, yeah. Okay. Does that make sense, Jay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the new field though? What do we want to call it? <laughs> Let the bike sharing begin. Yeah. <laughs> Case native validating admission policy <laughs> status. Um, what are people calling? Are are people calling it validating admission policy, or what are they? What are they calling it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Okay. That name's that name's sticking. We should probably versus, versus what VAP? Right, or or we called our engine Kate's native. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I don't think we could have is... called it VAP because it would be very it would have been very confusing. But what is very... we're we're the ones calling it VAP because yeah. we can't say the whole thing. Yeah. It's a wordy wordy name. It is. We should just call it whatever people are calling the tool, right? It, in like KubeCon and whatever else, right? Because then they'll see it in status and they'll be like, oh yeah, that thing. That's what I was trying to get working. Oh, you, like you say like the web B generation or something? Yeah, like, like, I mean, honestly, we could just have a sub object called validating admission policy or insert popular name here. And then we could have something like uh, binding generated at generation and then put the, the generation for the last time the binding was looked at. And that would let people know whether the the binding is stale as well, right? Like, because if you update the constraint in a way such that the binding should change, but the controller is down, you kind of want to be able to to know that that's happened. Mm, that's actually really nice. I'm uh, sorry, I was on mute. You said validating admission policy as the top level, and then yeah. the generation. Yeah, and then binding. Mm -hmm. Uh, generated for generation? That's too many generateds. Uh, so something like that, I put it in the chat. Uh, and then this is just me thinking. I don't know. Oh, no, I wouldn't use a, a Boolean. Uh, and I would also associate it with the fact that we're generating the binding. Right? Um, uh, let me edit also. Can I edit? I can edit. That's weird. But yeah, like Validating admission policy, I'm assuming, again, that's what people are calling it at KubeCon. Uh, so like the, the binding, should we just call it a binding generated like that, maybe? Well, we want the generation, right? So so like observed generation, kind of, but we're, it's specifically for when the binding was created, right? Like binding generation, 
and then you don't want bool like generated. This is very confusing. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't want a bool. I don't. Well, we don't need a bool. I think the fact that generation exists should. Well, maybe binding generation successful. But that'll be a bool. Uh, I you could talk me into a bool being useful just in the sense of like. <laughs> Uh, there, there could be times where users have explicitly configured the binding not to be generated. And maybe they want to know that it hasn't been. Uh, but you also want to have which generation of the constraint this validating admission policy status entry is valid for. So you can detect whether the binding is potentially stale, like based off of an older generation of the constraint than is currently present. Okay. Like you have for the metadata that generation field, right? Sorry, Manx, I missed you. Yeah, so metadata.generation is on every object in Kubernetes. And every time you modify the resource, it increases the generation by one. And that is where we get observed generation in status.bipod. That's a way of letting users know whether one of the gatekeeper pods has a stale view of the constraint. Similarly, we also want to know whether the binding has been generated from a stale view of the constraint to help users with debugging. Right, like if they're like, I thought I turned this off, why is it still generating the binding or vice versa, right? And then they see, wait, my generation is like 10, but yeah. this, validating admission policy thing is still at like two. Okay, this process must have died somehow. Right? Either the pod's dead or, or whatever. Yeah. Something like this, then? Or we don't want to club together? Yeah, that works for me. And this way, we could also no, report. I think you're talking about this. But this is the, right? Observe generation. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Can, can we not, not use? Let's just be consistent, right? Yeah. Uh, and and we don't need timestamp. We we don't can can we yeah. can I mean how bad can we get away with that B? <laughs> I I just want is it really bad? Like, Wait, oh that B is uh as the the name of the field in status yeah is it is it bad because it's, it's not validating a mission policy right specifically it's for binding so if anything oh. it's the whole word we i i think we want to also take into account room to maneuver in the future like You know, I, I we don't control what validating admission policy is going to do, right? 
Mm. You want to leave room for other stuff. We're going to stick in this thing. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. I was just hoping for like shorter. But... I, I, I don't think shorter matters in this case because this is not a, a field users will uh, type in mostly. So. Um, you're just adding more stuff to this object. That's all. But it's 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 minimal, yeah. It, don't worry about it. Oh. Okay, so I will put this in the notes. I think I'm okay with this. Um, anything else about this? No, I'm good. Anything uh, else we are done. Sorry? We may want to leave room for multiple errors, but. Multiple errors. Yeah, like let's say there's like a bunch of problems, not just one. Uh, so like generated, not generated errors, array of errors field. And errors will like be present or not if errors are present or not. I, I wouldn't try to overload that binding field. Like, if anything, if we really want to show generated, I would just use a bool, to be honest. Like, I know they, like, kind of, like, yeah. eh, reconsider using bool, but this is this is a pretty clear bool situation. Like I, I, prefer, I prefer bool, because we also have enforced so it, it's just prettier. Um, and then, and then it, 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 can this just be message maybe? Because we have message in other places. The message could be the error or whatever. Uh, we, we probably want a specific, like a dedicated errors field just so that if people want to build status reporting infrastructure on top of this, they have a thing they can look at and run a simple test, right? Errors fields count zero, assume good, right? Sure. I mean, I, I'm not against also having a message field, but um, I would tend to have dedicated problem channels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so errors is an array, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So then four twenty seven is. Is it just pending on this, or could this be a follow-up? I don't know. This is definitely a follow-up. This is none of this work happens in frameworks. Okay. Um, this this is all gatekeeper. So I don't think there's anything else blocking for twenty seven then, right? Yeah. So I just need to make the change for uh, not depending on generate VAP field for binding creation. I'll make that change. Sorry, say that one more time. Uh, I'll make the change. Uh, so right now, uh, the logic is to look at generate VAP field from template for binding, but we mm -hmm. don't want to do that. So I'll make that change and then we are good to merge it. Okay. All right. Simpler for the win. Uh, and I would, for the follow on for this, if people are okay with it, like the, okay, we've merged into frameworks. Uh, what, and now we're going to put it in Gatekeeper. Let's just move the code into Gatekeeper as part of that PR, right? Like we could leave it in frameworks for a bit, but just copy it over. Okay. And have Gatekeeper be the new source of truth. Any objections to that? This comes to the same uh explanation about moving the cell uh 
report to Gatekeeper, right? Yeah, that's that's what I'm suggesting. We just do that now because I think before we didn't want to do it because you had this PR in flight. Yeah. And where does it go in Gatekeeper? Uh, probably its own package, like Kate's native engine engines. Kate's native. Some some folder under uh, the PKG folder. Yeah, we have one for target. So what do we want to call this? Uh, driver? Yeah. OK, so and then move all this on, under driver. OK. And then depending on if it's regular or not, yeah, we just keep increasing the scope for J. No, this, uh, this isn't, uh, I don't think this changes any logic. This just changes whether he's well, in. But you have to um, move like what, like which package to call depending on if it's Rego or, or uh, Cell, right? No? No, you you can like because the constraint framework handles all of that natively in like an agnostic way. Like you can, we could create like ten drivers right now in Gatekeeper, add them to uh, the constraint framework, and the constraint framework would just figure it out based off of, you know, the configuration of the individual constraint templates. Okay. Yeah, there's there's nothing special about the driver living in the uh, constraint framework, and there's no. And let me know if I'm you discover I'm wrong here, but I'm like ninety five percent sure. There's nothing about the driver that is assuming it's in the constraint framework, and vice versa. This is pretty I careful think, to keep those separate. I think it's true. But anyway, if I face any errors, I'll reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the next conversation topic anyway. Sweet. Well, because I mean, because in Maine, right? Right now we're instantiating, we're calling Kate Sal from the from framework drivers. So if we're moving Kate's out to under a keeper, you would call from that drivers, not the framework drivers. Yeah, the import path would change. Yeah, that's the what I think. Yeah. yeah, okay. There's, there's no like logical changes, just- uh, Oh, okay. The import path, and I think just that import path right right because once you instantiate it then from that point forward you're just calling driver again okay i think that that's what you meant okay because i was like you there's there's you, you of course you have to change this yeah. okay anyway any other topic Uh, Jay, can you make sure you update the the doc to reflect all this? Uh, yeah, the VAP user flow doc, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait. Nothing, if there's nothing else, I guess. Did we get hit the issue 556? Oh, oh yes. Where's 556? What's the last discussion topic? Oh, um, I think that's just the way it works. And Jay's updating the cell stuff to reflect the same behavior as Rego, right? Oh, OK. That's, that's what 556 was. OK. Yeah.
So we're good, right? And I think you're adding the exam images to the test. I updated the description and added exempt images to the uh, constraint uh, Test. for yeah. for testing as well. Yeah, I was looking at this. I realized like we don't have and I, I don't think we have any test that has exempt images. So funny. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. All right, cool. Well, thanks. That was. Uh, Productive discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.